For a long time, dopamine has been known as one of the happiness chemicals. People typically associate dopamine with an immediate but short-time feeling of pleasure that is triggered of small positive things. There are trends around it, like dopamine decor or dopamine dressing, saying that you will be happier if you have small details in your home or in the way you dress that will trigger your dopamine. However, lots of research throughout the last 25 years has shown that the original idea of dopamine as a short-acting pleasure chemical has proven wrong. But is it all just a misconception? To get one thing clear in the beginning, lots of videos around dopamine that you will find online talk about dopamine levels of the brain, which could make it look like the brain has kind of a big soup of chemicals with levels of the individual chemical going up and down. In reality, things are not that simple, of course. Dopamine, for example, isn't just everywhere. It is produced a few places and transported to other brain regions via pathways where it finally is released and triggers other neurons in those regions. So theoretically, you could have high dopamine levels in one region and lower levels in another. When talking about dopamine and happiness, it typically refers to one of those dopamine pathways, the pathway from the VTA to the nucleus accumbens, sometimes called the mesolimpic pathway or reward pathway. The idea of dopamine being a pleasure chemical started decades ago when researchers found that rats would keep pressing a lever that stimulated precisely this pathway. The rats would even ignore food and drinks just to press the lever. Their conclusion that time was, this must feel incredibly good. They kind of couldn't ask the rat whether they really felt happy in that moment, but studies with humans showed that they had increased dopamine activity in this reward pathway whenever they experienced small good things that were supposed to give you pleasure. You taste a really good thing, dopamine. You get a like in social media, dopamine. You see a really funny video, dopamine. You discover a really good song, dopamine. Together with the rat experiment, it sounded plausible. Dopamine, or more precisely dopamine of the reward pathway, must be the source of pleasure. However, one mistake the researchers did was that they didn't differentiate between wanting and liking, with wanting being the feeling of wanting to get, achieve or do something and liking the actual pleasurable sensation. And many experiments have shown dopamine actually stands for wanting and therefore for creating motivation. So when we release dopamine in the reward pathway, that actually means do more of whatever you're doing right now. So it's actually the other way around as originally assumed. We experience pleasure, actually in some brain regions known as the hedonic hotspots, and because of that, the brain wants to make sure we get more of it and releases dopamine to keep us going. So for the social media user, that means whenever they, for example, see a funny video on TikTok, they get dopamine because their brain wants them to get more of it, and this dopamine will be there long enough to let them keep going until they see the next funny content. And that is why they can get stuck for hours. And the brain remembers. Next time we get the opportunity to do the same thing, the brain already releases dopamine before we get to do it to make sure we take the right decision and do what we like. So what about the rats in the experiment? They got confused. The release of dopamine when pressing the lever makes them feel that this is exactly what they should be doing and their brain, or let's say their dopamine, tells them keep going. But whether they actually also experience pleasure at the same time remains unclear. Because you cannot ask rats about that, they use a different method. They knew that rats lick their mouth when they really enjoy some food. So to find out whether dopamine is necessary for this enjoyment, they destroyed the dopamine pathways of some rats and gave them sugar. Their reaction was unchanged. They still licked their mouth like before and seemed to enjoy it. Dopamine wasn't necessary for that enjoyment. However, when not given directly into their mouth, they wouldn't be doing something to get the sugar. They didn't have the dopamine for it. So there can be pleasure without dopamine. Can there be lots of dopamine without pleasure? Yes. Imagine you're on a diet and then you see a tasty and tempting piece of cake. Your dopamine levels will definitely go up as hell, especially if you're also hungry at that moment. Your brain wants you to eat the cake. But as you know you can't, the moment doesn't sound quite pleasurable. So is it true that dopamine does not cause pleasure at all? Well, some things would still be unanswered. And many of you might have wondered this already. When you're motivated for something, isn't that a good feeling? At least when you're not being stopped from doing it. The next big puzzle is... There are ways to trigger dopamine release in the reward pathway by consuming drugs like cocaine. So according to the theories, cocaine users, or let's say first-time users, as there are different rules for people already addicted, 
should only be motivated but not empirical and happy at all? Researchers Ken Barrett and Martin Kringelbach have addressed these puzzles in a chapter in one of their articles. Their suggestion, when having lots of dopamine released by the reward system, you will not only be extremely motivated for whatever comes to your mind, but the whole world looks also more appealing. And this could cause a feeling that people could mistake with actual pleasure. So in their paper, they call it a sham reward. That sounds weird, isn't it? How can you mistake a feeling? After all, feelings are subjective. Well, this might be part of the puzzle. There can be activations in some brain regions, but this does not always go hand in hand with how we would consciously rate that feeling, which again depends on a lot of different things. And for some people, a state of high motivation could actually, in some situations, feel pleasurable. If you got more interested in the functions of dopamine in terms of motivation, I recommend you to watch this video of mine about dopamine and the reward pathway.